Hey. Awesome. So welcome to part two of the GPC uh, setup uh, using Sanko as our guinea pig. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, I sent you via Slack a link to some notes that we'll have. Instead of using um, Slack for exchanging stuff, I'll use the Google Doc now. That way I can just link to it later on from the from the Google Sheet with all the with all the stuff uh, for the different sessions. So uh, let me just uh, share my screen first to um, just exemplify what we should be able to do at the end of today. Okay. Oh, um, so the idea is that, um, you know, we already did the CyberDuck setup on the, on the previous session, such that if you open CyberDuck, which for some reason takes a bit of time for me, um, um, we're then, we're then going to be able to, um, um, access the cluster and open files from the cluster using CyberDuck. And CyberDuck will synchronize them for us. Um, so let me just go to, um, one of my particular bookmarks at GPC. So let's see, for example, Brainsync phase two. Um, so from here, I can like um, right click, ed edit with, and select our studio. Right. So we did all this setup um, last time. And at this point in time, uh, we also set up the SSH keys. Um, such that we can then um, log in quickly into our studio. Uh, sorry, into Gypsy from the R Studio terminal. So again, my R Studio takes a while to load. Um, I just think that my computer is not great at handling the recording plus the webcasting. Um, anyway. So let me clean. Uh, yeah, then um, we could always go to. No, I'm increasing the zoom. Sorry. Uh, we can either go always go to tools at the very top terminal and then select new terminal, or here I already have the terminal pane. I click new terminal, and then. For you guys, we use the SSHJ acronym. In my computer, I have E uh, because the cluster used to be called Enigma before it was renamed as Gypsy. So uh, I'm still used to using that shortcut. Once we're here, right, uh, then we can um, QRSH uh, to request a compute node. Um, such that we can do our work in and we of the, we um, change the default modules uh, that get loaded. And in particular for today, we're actually loading Git, a Git module. Um, and we're also loading what is called Git LFS. LFS stands for La Large File uh, Storage 2.8 and a script called Git Status Size. Um, uh, we these are a bit more advanced and we might not get to do them today but um at this point i'm on the cluster i can use my um alias to change the directory in this particular case i'm going to a location on dc on the dc l01 desk i can go to the brain seek phase two uh, folder um and then we can open our and start running code, right? Like um, uh, the shortcut for evaluating code was Alt Command Enter. 
Um, and so you can see I didn't have to copy paste the library uh, lib pheno is doing this automatically, right? Um, cool. So at this point, we're able to, uh, you know, uh, create scripts um, and start working with them um, uh, using data on the cluster, using the computers on the cluster. Um, but something that's really important is to version control our work, right? And so as an example, let me go to uh, the, uh, actually I'm gonna open an incognito window so it won't show anything private. Um, incognito window. Um, so we go to github.com slash liver institute. You'll see that we have a lot of uh, repositories there that are uh, public. Um, um, we do. We also have some of them that are private, but in particular, right now, we're showing the brain seek phase two one. Um, Okay, and so the brain CP2, this was for a project that I led, um, uh, working also with Emily Burke and Andrew Jaffe. Um, and you can see over here that it says it has 609 commit messages. So what is a commit? Uh, when you're working with Git, um, you want to uh, keep track of all your, um, Analysis files, so not the not the output, not the not the big R data files, but uh, but the, you want to version control all, all your R scripts. And the way you can do this, right, is I mean, there's multiple solutions. One of them is called Git. Uh, then GitHub is a different service, which allow, which provides us um, um, a location where you can share your your code. Make it, you know, host it on the web and make it available for other people to use. Uh, so it's kind of like the social side uh, behind Git. Um, there's other solutions that uh, that are similar to this. In particular, there's one of them called Bitbucket. Now, um, why do you want to do this? You just keep one version of the file, right? So I don't have here add underscore smoking underscore pheno underscore final or, or underscore uh, 2019 or 2018. Um, so I only have a single version of the file. Um, so let me open one that I know has changed over time. Um, let's see. Uh, let's create supplementary tables. Um, so this here, this is one particular script creates supplementary tables, but we can look at the history of it. Um, and we can see here that, um, you know, there's, I made several changes to this script. Uh, the first version is from September, 2018, where I said like, oh, I added, you know, some code for doing this. Then at some point I had to add a column. Um, then I had to fix some files. So for example, um, all this stuff that you see here, each of these entries is a commit message. And the idea is that these commit messages are helpful for understanding what you were thinking when you made this change. So uh, let's look at the change for fixed CSV files in supplementary table two. Um, you can see here that all the change that it involved was adding a couple lines. This is, um, I don't know if you see it, but these lines are highlighted, these lines are highlighted in green. And it's just like, oh, fix CSV, and I added a bit of code there, right? Uh, if I only see this, right, like if I only look at what changed, I might need to, you know, read the code again and interpret what I was thinking when I did this, right? And so this, might be easy maybe for anyone to do a week after they do this code but this was code that i changed in october 2018 and um 
And so I wouldn't necessarily remember what I did. Uh, I, um, and then um, maybe because I know um, a bit more R, I can like read the code and, and say like, oh, okay, Leo, Leo from 2018 was trying to like um, uh, uh, fix some columns uh, here. Uh, but, um, um, but by putting a commit message, this is kind of like leaving breadcrumbs for you to understand what you did, you know, two months from now, six months from now, et cetera, or for other people to understand what you did. Um, and you can make them as long as you want. Um, here, this was a very short commit message, but you can have them be like multiple lines. So um, I'm not remembering off the top of my head I had a quick example that I have like that. Um, let's see. Let's see on these other projects, special LIBD. This one has 113 commits. Um, um, I don't remember any any particular long examples. These are only like a, like a sentence. Um, I do have some of them occasionally that I have like with a lot more um, uh, lines. Now the idea is that you want this messages to be specific. So this one in particular, update readmes, is maybe not the most specific one, um, but at least it tells me what files I was updating. Um, because um, this is just going to be an example uh, that I have fresh in my mind, um, but uh, there's um, many other repositories. Um, so this one in particular is from a collaborator, and so a lot of these messages, commit messages, are like update, update, update. Um, which, yes, you're updating something, right? But it doesn't tell you what you're updating. Okay. So that's a bit of a quick introduction to Git um, and why we want to be doing this. The next part is actually doing the setup for this, right? Um, because uh, normally, let's say, um, um, let's say that I'm actually working on Gypsy. What I would do is I would have terminal one on our studio logged into R, but then I would open a new terminal um, SSH into the Gypsy cluster, which for me is SSH E. Uh, your shortcut might be SSH, SSH J. I will cure SSH into a compute node. Um, go to the same directory. So in this case, I'm working on brain seek phase two. And if I make any edits on the code, so for example, here, let, let's say I want to. Uh, uh, say leave Fino uh, with quotes. I'll save that code. On terminal two, I can run Git. Um, oh, I don't have the permissions to edit this file. <laughs> All right. Let's choose a different example. Um, um, Let's go to the supplementary tabs. Um, create supplementary tabs um, file. So, um, uh, so let's see. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Actually, I'm going to use our. Um, so I made this file before I actually started using R Studio more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the code with uh, Command A. Then I'm going to use the little one here and then say uh, reformat code, which is shift command A. So this makes the code a lot more readable automatically. 
And so, so this particular file is under the brain secrets two repository on the supplementary tabs directory. Now in terminal two, I can run um, git status. I see that I have modified a file and that I was already version control it. So I want, if I want to version control the changes, I use git add then the name of the file, git commit and a message and say like the format code. I'll put a message there. Um, so this is the syntax is git space commit dash m space double quotes whatever message you want inside of it. And then at, uh, at any point you can always run git status again and it will uh, give you a hint of what you can do. And here it says like, oh, you're ahead by one commit. Git, you use git push to publish your, uh, your changes. So I'll use that. Um, and um, uh -oh. I made a good push. I actually have it on Slack synced, so the particular channel for this project got an updated message. You'll see that the git commit message shows up here. So this can be useful for your collaborators to know what you were doing at that point. Um, and the goal is to keep your directory clean. So if you type git status, it will say like, oh, nothing to commit, working clean, uh, working trees clean. Um, now, in order to do all of this, GitHub needed to know who I was when I made these changes. Um, and so we're gonna to have to do some setup. Um, there's a lot more stuff on the Happy Git with R book, um, but this was just like a quick demo of why we wanna be doing in all of this. So, um, the first thing we need to do is to add some uh, SSH keys. And so for this, um, uh, we're gonna to switch to Sanko's computer, but before we do that, I would I just wanted to know if anyone had any questions so far. Okay. Cool. So um, I'll stop sharing. Hey, I'm actually having like a bit of an issue, um, but I might like need to just talk to you offline. Um, so, and I'm sorry, like my family's loud in the background, if you can hear them. Um, but so like if I QRS, if I open an R file from my computer and open our studio, I can QRSH in, like I can get into Gypsy, it's fine. But when I open an R file from Gypsy in, like I can't QRSH, like I can't get in. To Gypsy, like through the terminal. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, this we can probably debug it uh, in the, okay. uh, after this uh, this session because okay. I I would need to look into it more, right? Like what's actually going on uh, in your yeah. case. It doesn't okay. sound like a like a like a simple solution, but hopefully it will be. <laughs> It's, I mean, I honestly, I feel like it's like there is something wrong in my settings, like, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll spend some time after this. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so, Sanko, can you please um, uh, share your screen? Okay. Um, so I'm going to be putting links on, on, the, um, on the Google Doc. Um, um, so, uh, can you go to github.com? This one, right? Yeah. 
Um, and then on the very top right, you okay. see that they have a, I think it's like a yellow icon in your case. Sure. Yellow icon. Um, yeah. Yeah, so click there and then click settings. So, uh, so then go and click SSH and GPG keys on the left side. I'm putting all the links on the, uh, as we speak. Um, Cool. So then there it says, uh, check out our guide for generating SSH keys. Can you click that? This one. Yeah, open it into a new tab. Don't, oh. um, uh, because we, we want the previous tab also. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, go to the guide in, a, in the new tab. I think you open it in the, oh. yeah. So then click on um, generating a new SSH key and adding it to the SSH client. Okay. Um, I think this is it. Um, Cool. So uh, just leave that open. In the meantime, can you, um, uh, uh, I need you to open the terminal and access the cluster. So this could be an R Studio terminal or a regular terminal, any one you want. I already. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, you already SSH into the cluster and you're yeah. running in a computer node QRSH, right? Mm -hmm. So. At this point, I need you to uh, look into the files, sorry, access the, the hidden .ssh directory and then look into the files. So that means typing um, um, cd uh, .ssh and then ls-lha. So it's, uh, it's two different commands. So after cd ssh, press enter. Oh. It's dot SSH, not not SSH. Oh, dot SSH. Hit enter. Yeah, hit enter. Okay. Then let's list the hidden file. So that's ls space dash lha. Lha is for list. H is for human. A is for all, and it's without the B. Yeah, press enter. Cool. So you don't have any um, key files there. So um, I'm just looking at this because I just wanted to double check that we wouldn't overwrite any files that you, any, any keys that you have already. Okay. So now, uh, now you can go to the the browser tab that you have open on the left, and then. Um, and then um, copy the ssh dash keygen command without the dollar sign at the, at the beginning of the line. The, oh. No. Copy that, paste it into the terminal, but don't press enter because you need to edit that command. Okay. You, you cannot select and edit on a terminal. You need to use the arrows. That's right. Terminals were made before uh, you know, when computers were um, didn't have as uh, as a nice like in, in uh, graphic interface, the idea was that you could do everything from the keyboard without using a mouse. So you need to uh, you need to go and delete the email you have mm -hmm. there. And you need to type your. Um, uh, your uh, GitHub email, the, the one you use for your GitHub account. I don't know which one was that one was. Oh. Hey Leo, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so I'm trying this also on my computer and like I actually had some stuff come up that was like Lieber Jaffe when I typed the LA, LS-LHA 
So I know you said something about not overwriting things. Like, should I still like keep going and follow along? Okay, so let's, um, can we switch to uh, broadcasting your computer, Kristen? If that's okay. Uh, yeah. Remember this is gonna get recorded. Yeah. I'm, um, so I think Sang Ho may have to stop sharing his screen for a okay. second. Stop share. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. So yeah, this is what I see. Okay. This is the graph like stuff. Yes. So um, can you just make it a little bit bigger? Yeah. You can uh, you can uh, use a um, control plus to make the plot bigger. Oh, um, you mean command, command plus. plus? Okay. Yeah, command plus. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. So what um, what Kristen has here is uh, she has the same authorized key files that San Ho had on his uh, cluster account, but please, Kristen also has already. Um, an SSH key, um, uh, um, key and, uh, and value pair. That's the ID underscore DSA and ID underscore DSA dot cloud files. Um, these are files that uh, are used internally in the cluster to go from the master compute node to any of the other compute nodes without typing that password. Um, and, uh, uh, basically, the one file that we're going to create is going to be an RSA key file. You can see that on the left side on the on the browser, it says there on step three that we're going to get a prompt that says enter a file in which to save the key, and like uh, by default it's going to be like um, your home directory dot ssh slash id rsa. I don't know if you see it there on the left uh, under the bullet for tree. Kristen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So here, the main thing I wanted to double check is that we didn't have a file that it was called ID underscore RSA. Okay. Right. So which we don't, which I don't. Yeah, you don't. So you're good. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we can switch back to San Juan then. Okay. Uh, because it's going to be the same steps for you and San Juan at this point. And it doesn't matter that I'm doing it in just the regular terminal versus our studio, right? Nope, this okay. doesn't matter for any okay. of that. Thanks, Leo. Sure. Um, Is this gonna yes. be my ID for the email? No, it has to be your email. So for that, you can go... I forgot what, I, what email I used for. Yeah, one second, let me see. Uh, so if you click on profile on the very left on personal settings profile, um, not there. Oh, on the board. No, you need to go to settings again. Yeah. Settings. Top left, it says personal settings. You're, you're in the good page, oh. you're in the good page. Uh, their profile. So we're on SSH and GP, oh, here, GP yeah. keys, click profile. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you don't have a public email there. Then oh. go to emails then. Mm -hmm. And so that's your email that you use, SK117. Okay. Yeah, so use that same email for. Okay. Uh, you have an extra dot after the aroba. You need yeah. to uh, use the arrows, the left arrows, to go and delete that extra dot after the aroba. <laughs> delete. I'm not following. Oh, sorry. So you went, you went too far back. Far back. No, no, you're good. You're good. Just, oh. you know, just after the dash capital C, yeah. double quotes. Type your email. Type my email. Yeah. One. Yeah. Close the double quotes. Mm -hmm. You see and that? then press enter. Okay. So then it says we got that prompt from the if, uh, on your browser. Could you uh, 
open the, your middle tab, the one that has instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we got that prompt that's, uh, that we uh, that GitHub said that we were going to get the number, the prompt in tree, right? Mm -hmm. sure. Which says like, oh, enter a file, which to save the key, right? So we got the same message there. Yeah. Right, so in, on your R terminal, just press enter because that's okay. Um, then press enter uh, twice. Right, and just press enter a, a couple times because we don't, we don't want to be seeing this uh, key thing. Uh, cool. So now can you use ls uh, uh, to see the hidden files again? So that, that was ls space dash lha. Oh, ls space LA, lha. Cool. Right, so now you, you have now the the two files, id underscore rsa mm -hmm. and id underscore rsa dot pub. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> cool. Um, so uh, now we need to copy the contents of that, of the pub file. And so for this, let's use cyberduck. This is probably the easiest. So you go to cyberduck. Um, now, um, uh, we need, can you go to your bookmark for the home, uh, mm -hmm. for your home at Gypsy? Yeah. Awesome. Um, and so everyone here should be able to see the .ssh directory, which is a hidden directory, if you enable the show hidden files option in CyberDoc. Just to recap, um, Sanjo, can you go to the very top uh, of your screen where it says CyberDoc? Uh, then click uh, Preferences. Then uh, uh, click browser, which I mean is already selected, really. So that general says show hidden files. That first box should be ticked. Right. So yeah. So Sanjo has a correct setup already, but that's not the default setup. This is something we had to edit last time. Uh, if this is the first time you're doing this, you need to quit Cyberdoc completely, then reopen it in order to see this. Cool. Can you close that? Thank you. So going to dot, the dot .ssh directory, you can do that by double left clicking. Double left clicking. And then um, the id underscore rsa.pub file, right click on it and, uh, and say edit with. Text edit, yeah, that's okay. So select all of that. and then copy it. Mm -hmm. Now go to your, back to your browser. Browser. And go to the first tab where it's called email settings for you. And now go to SSH and GPG keys. Then at the very top where it says new SSH key, uh, select that. Uh, under the key uh, box, paste what you have. Uh, and then put it, give it a title. So this is, you know, I would call this like, I don't know, uh, gypsy account or, or um, anything you want there. Yeah. Cool. Say so click at SSH key. And it's gonna ask for your GitHub password. Awesome. All right. Um, cool. So, um, has everyone else been able to get to this point? Yes, I have. Awesome. Um, I wasn't looking at the faces of everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay. So we're, uh, you can repeat this process also on your own computer if you wanted to. Um, if, uh, if you don't want to be typing your GitHub password and your username every time. But uh, I mean, right now we're only doing the Gypsy setup side. Um, now, um, on your terminal, uh, on, our, on our studio, in your case, Anjo, can you go back to your home directory? So that's CD. Okay. Yeah. 
you know, the terminal type CD space uh, tilde. Mm -hmm. What was the tilde symbol? Tilde symbol. Um, on many keyboards, it, the tilde symbol is above the tab key on the very far left of your keyboard. Oh, is this the right? No, that's a back tick. So it's the key of a top, uh, <clears throat> tab. It is on my computer. I'm not sure. It depends on what language your keyboard is on. Um, you mean this? Yeah, that one. Yes. Oh, okay. Press enter. So that you know gives you takes mm -hmm. takes you to home directory. Can we can we see the hidden files in your home directory, please? Oh, so do I type ls dash? Yep, oh. that's a command for the looking at all the hidden files. All right, so what I'm looking for is a dot, um, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a dot uh, git config file, which you don't have. Mm -hmm. So let's um, let's create the let's create it. So I'm going to post on the Google Doc command. Um, so we're going to use touch till the Get config. Right. So copy and paste it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, you can also like create the hidden file from uh, Cyberlock. Um, Um, so now, um, using Cyberduck, yeah. go to uh, your home directory, yeah. and then um, you need to refresh it because it, it does not listen to the .github uh, config profile. Yeah. yeah. Now, so now uh, you can right click git config and edit with. It's um, it's like two lines of yeah. You, you can't. Yeah. And now uh, copy paste the 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 content that I put on. on. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, you need to edit stuff, yeah. Is it gonna be the GitHub? This is your GitHub email, yeah. Oh. That's why I called it your GitHub <laughs> at email.com. And then uh, your, um, the line before where it says name, it has to be your GitHub username. Okay. Which I'm not sure which one it is for you. I'm gonna double check. Yeah, I think I got it right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you need to have an empty line at the end, which you have already. Mm -hmm. So you can save and close that.
Okay. So I'm just adding, uh, making the GitHub instructions a bit more complete. Awesome. So now let's test this. Um, so uh, let's see which one. Uh, um, so go to github.com. The browser. Yeah, on the browser. Go to github.com. Um, okay. Um, sorry. On the very uh, far left where it says view, on green, oh. um, click there. Yes. And so, you know, give it a, any, you know, any name you want for testing. Testing. Yeah, any name you want, really. Um, that will be the name of a directory later on. Okay. So, um, it has to be without um, uh, without spaces. So they're oh. saying like, "Oh, we're gonna change it. We're gonna change the spaces for dashes, for example." Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, cool. So click on the green button where it says "Create Repository." Right, nice. So, um, uh, okay. Um, on, um, um, let's see, uh, click on the very top where it says um, HTTPS. Um, it's, a, it's under the quick setup if you've done this kind of thing before. Oh, here. Yeah, click SSH instead of HTTPS. Oh. Yeah. Then um, where on the very right, right side, there's like a clipboard icon. Click on that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now go to your terminal. Terminal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, you're already in your home directory. And so this is a perfect location for testing. So then type git space clone and then paste the link that you, yeah. So you, here the syntax is git clone space and it's a, it's, if you select that SSH, it should start with git at github.com and then the rest of it, the rest of it depends on your username and the name of the repository you chose. So now you can press enter there. Okay. So this is like setting up a repository. And uh, it's, uh, because the first time that he's using this uh, key, this RSA key, it's asking if this is okay to like, to use. So you uh, type yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then I like added github.com to the list of no hosts, which is okay. Um, and then uh, it says like, oh, warning, you have, you appear to have cloned an empty repository. That's okay because this was an empty repository. So now you can uh, uh, go into the directory that you just created. You can see the directory by typing ls space lha uh, dash lha. You can't click, you need to oh, use the yeah. arrows. Right. So there on green at the very top because you, you, you chose numbers for yours, oh. it's, um, zero, four, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you can go into that directory. Is it CD? CD is for changing directory. So oh. C is for change, D is for directory. Three. And the type. Yeah, you can, you can just type zero and then press okay. tab and it will autocomplete for you. Because that's oh. cool. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so I entered there. Oh, 
example, now create um, a, an R script file. So that's uh, use the touch command and like any name you want. Touch. Oh, sorry, before you do that, before you do that, yeah. now we're in the GitHub repository. Uh, you can always type git space status. Git space. What was the status? Status. Yeah, press enter. Okay. So here's so I was like, oh, you're, you know, there's nothing there, really. Um, but it looks kind of clean. Mm -hmm. um, so now create uh, create the R script that you want. So touch space, the name of your R script dot R. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay. It cannot have spaces. Oh, okay. And then, is it going to be dash then or underscore? Like if uh, I dash or underscore, both of them work, but no okay. spaces. And then cast. I mean, you could always have spaces, but then you need to escape the space. Uh, and that makes it nice. Yeah, touch it. Cool. Open it from CyberDuck. From Cyber. You need to refresh your session. Mm -hmm. yeah. then, oh. oh. It's going to be double click. Double left click, yeah. And then right click. Uh -huh. Add it with our studio. Oh. Yeah, so now, you know, print any any commands you want. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not an R command. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, what else? Uh, okay. Can think of. Could you give me any codes? I mean, you you call it random plus, right? So you could use a R. R. Um, uh, sorry, lowercase R. Oh. N O. N O. R M. Oh. Yeah. And then open parentheses and say five. Five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So that executes and gives you five uh, uh, random values based on the on the yeah you can go to term uh, to your um, oh. yeah, well right now you're editing that code in your own computer right pretty good um, yeah okay the idea here is just to save this file save do I save save the file the random underscore test. Just click save, right? Click. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now type git space status. Oh, status. Mm -hmm. Press enter. And there you see it says uncrack files and it shows you in red. Uh, mm -hmm. And it tells you like, oh, if you want to include this file to be committed, I use a git add space uh, file syntax, right? Um, so type git add, git space add, space random underscore test. What this command, what it's telling us is that we want to include this, um, the changes in this file in our next um, save point. The save points are the commit messages that we make. Um, and so you might have edited, let's say 10 files, but you might only want to include for your given commit message only like five of them. Um, and that could be because um, like we were talking earlier, the, com the git commit messages should be specific and help you understand later on what were the changes you made in your code. If you make a commit message with like 10 files that were modified for different logical reasons and you do all of them in a single commit, it will be really hard to later on to, for you and your collaborators to understand exactly what, you know, what you did and how everything was related. So, uh, so Sanjo, just type git add uh, space random underscore test. I mean, mm -hmm. random, um, yeah. yeah. You can you can use autocomplete at this point. Oh. Yeah. Press enter and then type git status again. Oh. And now it says like, oh, you have changes to be committed in green, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, and so, you know, this looks okay for us. So you can type um, git space commit 
space dash m for the dash m is for message space uh, inside quotations your message right so this should be a, a message that is um, useful to you later on to understand what you were thinking when you did this right so it has to be specific as possible so uh, so uh, that particular message that you chose is not the most specific one uh -huh. um, because uh, like like I mean I see the name of a file but like I don't I don't even know what you were doing right uh -huh. uh, what you were thinking when you did this so let's change that message um, you can do this at this point if you made a typo for example so type git commit uh, then dash dash amend amend is spelled I always need to look this up um, uh, a m e n d oh mm -hmm. yeah. press enter um, and now this opens a VI interface for editing files. So type I. Now you can use the arrows to delete stuff. I mean, to move around and delete stuff. So delete, don't, don't delete any of this. Yeah. At the very top, go back to the top, use the arrows to go to the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the first line. Oh, okay. Yeah, what I'm asking you is to have a very a more specific message instead of random or score test. Just so, draw, delete this title. And yeah, so you could say like, um, like, um, uh, like obtain five uh, random numbers, right? Or from the random numbers. Yeah. Uh, is it specific enough? To... Yeah, yeah. And do I press enter to keep going? Uh, so I'm, I'm. Um... Oh, sorry. Putting on the Google Doc uh, the syntax. Um, so for the VI interface, we already did the I to start editing. Um, uh, and now to save and quit, you need to press the Escape key first. Okay. Then you need to type colon WQ. Uh, for to make a column, do I need to click shift plus semicolon? Uh, well, that depends on your keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Does it have to be all the same time? I mean, do I have to press? No, no. Oh, no. Okay. you type it. Yeah. In the in the sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Double. Oh, cool. So now I type um, git space status. Git status. Press enter. All right. So now it says like, oh, um, uh, oh, I don't know what happened to yours. Okay. Uh, try. Try just typing git space push. Let's see if this works. Press enter. Cool, it did work. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go back to your browser, um, go refresh that page. That's the one, the page for your, um, you you exited the, uh, you stopped uh, sh um, sharing your screen. Did it work? 
I think because the Zoom window is in the top. Oh, I just clicked it. Probably one. press press stop sharing. Sorry. Yeah, cool. So you can see now uh, that we have a one commit. Um, oh. We have a file called a random underscore test. Mm -hmm. And if you click, if you want to see the git commit history, so that you need to press where it says one commit right now on the left side. Mm -hmm. Above the blue, uh, just right above the blue bar, yeah, click there. You can see like, oh yeah, we have, you know, one mm -hmm. commit there. Cool. So, uh, you know, let's continue working, right? Like now that this is the point where we just um, committed a script, right? And start editing. And so uh, uh, let's say you want, let's say you're working on a differential expression analysis, right? And, um, and Andrew or I or Matt or anyone gives you some code that they ran before. At this point, I highly recommend committing um, and pushing the initial version of the script. That way you can easily um, see what changed over time, uh, what you edited to make the script work for your particular data set. Uh, if you just copy the script, uh, make all the edits and then commit it, you lose that history. You mm -hmm. lose the changes that you made, right? You, know, you, you use the ability to see what changed over time. So let's imagine that at this point, um, um, uh, Sam Ho copied the random underscore test.r script from Abby, right? Abby gave Sam Ho the script. She copied it, uh, sorry, he copied it. And now, you know, Sam Ho wants to edit it. So uh, at this point, he would like go to Cyberdog, open the R script, uh, open the terminal, which we already did, you already did this. Um, and now let's say he wants to edit the script, right? So go to um, random underscore test on your um, on your R Studio window. You don't need to do anything with Cyberduck because you already opened it. Oh, okay. Right. And mm -hmm. so let's say you want to add it the lines that I always suggest adding for reprodu pre for reproducibility, right? So I think you have those already saved on the reproducibility.r script yeah. that we made. Last so you time. can go. You can go to your home directory and open that one from Cyberduck. The terminal, right? Oh. From Cyberduck. From Cyberduck. Was it that home? Yeah, so rep reproducibility.r. So, you know, edit with our studio. And you copy that, all the, uh, copy the line number one only and then paste it at the very top of your random underscore test script. Here. No, not, not in the terminal. Oh. On your random, you cannot, you cannot select with the mouse. Right. Yeah, on the random underscore test, it's um, mm -hmm. one tab to the left of your reproducibility.r script. Not on Cyberduck, but on our studio. Oh. At the very top of your screen, where you have the oh, it files. Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so paste it at, at, at the very top before your actual code. At the very top, okay. So undo it. And then... yeah. Why do we pay, why do we put library statements at the very top? That's because uh, these are uh, dependencies that not everyone have might have installed, and you don't want to be running code for half an hour, or an hour, or two hours, or something like that, and then suddenly run into an error because you don't have something installed. That's why you put everything, all the dependencies at the very top of the script, um, such as the session info. Now go back to the reproducibility.r script and copy the, the, the remaining lines, yeah, and paste them at the end. So this is the information you want at the end of the script, um, uh, such that it tells you like, um, um, this information tells you like what was the date it ran. So that is line number five. Um, line number six tells you how much time it took to run. Um, and then line seven and eight print the information of what packages you had. So um, um, yeah, this is all like you know useful information. I would like just for a little bit of formatting, I would separate 
I would add an empty line between lines two and three, and I would also add an empty line between line one and two, just to separate like what is the you know the extra the reproducibility code versus versus your like main analysis code, which in this case is just line number three. But like in a real scenario, that would be a lot of more lines, right? Um, so at this point, I would save the file. And then go to terminal one and type git status. Git status is always your friend with GitHub mm -hmm. because it will uh, try to give you hints on what to do and what has changed. And so here we see that we have changes not staged for commit in red. And it says like git add to update what will be committed. But um, uh, before you git add, it's best to see what has changed. So I'm gonna introduce you to a new command called git space diff. Space diff for difference D I F F. Diff. Oh. And then space the name of the file. So in this case, random underscore test. Can we make a quotation? What? Yeah, you don't need quotations. Okay. So random. Yeah, press enter once on. Okay. And then so here it says in green, it shows like what has been added. If you had anything that you deleted, oh. you show it in red. Um, so this, this is always good and very far that we're uh, committing the changes that we meant to commit. Um, mm. Occasionally you might have like a network problem and maybe your file didn't save completely. Um, um, uh, or maybe you, you know, you made a typo somewhere and at this point you can see what, you know, the typo was. Or maybe you don't remember, you've been working for an hour and you don't remember exactly what were all the changes you made. So this could be a quick way to remind yourself what are the changes you made before you make the commit message because you want the commit message to be specific, right? So if you type git status again, um, we, we, at this point we have verified the changes that we want to make. And so we need a version control the changes, right? So uh, to update what will be committed, um, that's what uh, the GitHub Git status is telling us. It's, um, it says like use the command git space add space the file. No. Okay. Cool. Press enter. Now, you know, at this point, you can make the commit message, but if you don't remember what you're supposed to do, uh, type git space status. Hit enter. Press enter. All right, and so um, uh, it says like, oh, okay. Uh, that's what you're supposed to commit, right? The random underscore test. So now you can uh, make the commit message, which is git space commit. Um, Um, yeah, uh, dash M, right? And then uh, inside quotations, no, um, inside quotations, your message. Remember, it has to be specific. Uh, audit. Oh, report. Audit. Report is cool. Can I press the answer? Can you go? Uh, so you didn't add um, you didn't add reproducibility dot r right? oh. you added the commands for reproducibility. Oh yeah, all right. Commands for commands for Uh, 
you know, I can continue. Right. Mm -hmm. then, um, uh, before you did this, um, well, I mean, yeah, let's, before you do this, can you go to Slack? Sure. Uh, go to the genomics one and then go to yourself. So that's direct messages for Sanjo, right? Type slash um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm putting it on, on the GitHub doc. So slash subscribe, I mean, slash GitHub space subscribe. And then in your case, um, the repository owner is yourself. So that's S H K W O N 17 mm -hmm. slash. And then the name of your repository, which you chose the complicated one, which is 0415 2020 test file. Yeah, press enter. Um, and so in this case, because this is the first time you did this, you have to add it to uh, to this conversation. Click there on the green button. Say allow. Uh, now try it again. Uh, oh, you need to connect your GitHub account. Um, connect them. Uh, authorize, and then you can go back to, uh, sorry, click install on the green button. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So this is for um, making sure that in, um, any changes that you make on a GitHub, um, uh, repository are automatically updated on uh, Slack. So now go back to your terminal and, and, and uh, type git push and then press enter. Push, press enter. So this is uploading the changes you made. Oh, no, I get and, and then you get a little message there. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we do this across many of our um, uh, shared uh, uh, channels. Right, and so let's say I'm working with you on that one. I can see a message there that says added uh, commands for, for reproducibility. So your short message gives me enough information to know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to necessarily look at the code, but if I want to, I can. And so if I want to look at the code, you can just click on that 0460F32D uh, on red. Um, in the slide. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Oh. So this actually is like goes to github.com and opens this specific git commit that you made. And so I can see the full message and I can see the code you made. I can, you know, make comments or whatever. Oh, um, cool. And so at this point you're like, you know, ready to go. Um, and so um, now someone more uh, like, so for example, Matt has been using git for a while. You'll notice that um, in all the stuff that I uh, was mentioning, we use the file names in the commands. So git diff, git add, um, particularly those two commands, we, I always specify the file name. This is to protect you from a common mistake, which is uh, when you version control um, every single file that you have, and you might accidentally version control very large files that github.com will not support. Um, or you might version control, you know, 20 files that you recently made or modified instead of like slowly break the, breaking them up. Um, so the idea is that a git commit message is, is, uh, is super cheap and you want to, uh, it's best to, you know, be as granular as possible um, such that your uh, commit messages will be as specific as possible and that will make your life later on a lot easier and the life of your collaborators easier too. Um, and so 
at this, you know, because we're going to be typing so many git push commands and stuff like that. Uh, we don't want to be typing our um, our uh, GitHub username and password all the time. That's why we set up the SSH keys such that you don't need to be doing this. Um, um, and like I said earlier, if someone gives you a script, uh, version control that original version. With, even if it has the paths for a different project or whatever, because that makes it a lot easier to see what has changed. So let me, I'm going to just show, um, this is currently a private repository, but let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, can you stop sharing yours? Mm -hmm. um, just so you can see, this is a practice that um, with uh, uh, my our collaborator Fernando goes. Uh, um, so I'm gonna go to the the particular repository. Um, this is currently a private repository because um, that's how we, we typically develop things. We, de we develop them in private. Um, and once they're ready for sharing, we, we, we flip a switch and it becomes all public. And so um, let me increase the font size. Let me increase the size. All right, there we go. Um, so um, this is a fairly new repository. That's why it only has 26 commits. But I've, I've been meeting him with him. This is my third week meeting with him. And so what we've been doing is um, uh, we've been uh, coding through Zoom where like I'm teaching him some stuff about R, but also all these like set of things. Um, so this is the second time I've done it, right? Um, and so, for example, here he has a commit message that says copy WGCNA from Zandy by Polar. And so this is a particular case where he copied um, a script completely from someone else. And you can see the, uh, the GitHub um, version history has every single line in green, right? And that's because like in this particular case, we added a script that's 101 lines long. Um, and if you do this, right, if you version control at the same time that you made a bunch of edits yourself, it's impossible for anyone to see what is different, right? Unless they really knew by memory the other script, you cannot know that, right? And so here with, uh, with, uh, with Fernando, he copied it, version controlled it. And then next, the next commit is like, he says, updated paths. And so here we can see in red, it's deleting some stuff, in green, it's adding. And so we can see what were the equivalents, right? So in this particular case, initially it was loading a bipolar RFC gene object, now it's loading a, a Go Zandy one. And then the degradation file names change a little bit um, um, and stuff like that. Like, um, 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 so those were like, you know, some of the modifications that happened in that particular like logical step. It's a very small step, right? Uh, next, we have a very long, long step. This is we spent like an hour or maybe two working on this. And then we he called it editing WGCNA code to make it suitable for the particular analysis he was doing. And so now there's a lot of more modifications, right? Uh, and we could have like split this up into more commit messages, um, but like, um, this makes it like easier to understand what you know change between things, right? So uh, like for example, in this particular analysis, initially there were 18 QSV variables, now there's 22 for this other data set, things like that. Um, and so this you, you can see if we added the representability information at the end, all this stuff, right? So it's a lot easier to follow logically the 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 sequence of what Fernando and I were thinking in this particular analysis, right? And so this continues, right? And like, um, and every single little thing is added. So for example, here it says like, oh, we created a shell script for the run underscore WGCNA. The next step is like, oh, we changed the memory from to 10 gigs. And then we say like, oh, now we added the blue JQ, right? And later on, there's another commit message that says to change the memory to three gigabytes, right? So all these messages are fairly easy to understand for anyone that, um, that is working on the project or knows a bit about it. Um, I mean, 
we can always click into it and see exactly what changed, right? The exact code that changed. But this is kind of like, it's kind of like writing documentation for yourself and others, uh, all these commit messages. Um, um, and so like, you know, there's only, there's only 26 commits, right? For this particular project, but this is a fairly new one, right? Um, so, uh, and so that's okay. Um, I always, uh, I don't like it when I see a published uh, repository with only like, you know, like 20 some commits for a large project. Cause that means they never, they never did this granular thing, right? They never like, show the logic of how they were changing things. Um, now these messages, even if your GitHub repository is private, eventually because we flip switches and make them public, they'll be read by others. So please avoid cursing on these messages, even if you're frustrated. Uh, people will do this and, you, and, and uh, I've seen it on applicants um, that, are, you know, uh, that have GitHub uh, repositories. I look at their GitHub commits to get an idea and like some people just will just curse and curse and curse. And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, you might be thinking that, but you don't want to let everyone else know it. All right. Uh, 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 so, uh, you know, frustration gets the better of us at times, but like, please avoid doing that. Uh, uh, cool. So are there any questions? Yeah. So this, um, you know, I think this video, it might be useful uh, to rewatch later on, uh, especially the first time that you're making edit, any edits by yourself. Um, um, just so you can see the full like sequence of, of steps. Um, now, I do have to add something um, uh, here on the Git commands, uh, like as a warning make a backup before any uh, git reset uh, commands. Um, this is because for some situations that you might Google and stuff, uh, you'll find that the answer involves a git reset command, but this is a very dangerous area that you're playing with because um, um, a Git repository, really what it makes is it makes a hidden but Git uh, directory. So let me just show you one for myself. Um, this is the BrainSeq one. It has a lot of stuff, but it has in the middle a dot Git directory, right? Um, and this directory has a bunch of stuff that Git knows how to interpret and use. Um, but if you use a Git reset command, it's editing all of this and you might delete stuff that you didn't want to delete. Um, so this is a warning really, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing any Git, re Git reset commands. I would like, uh, I recommend like asking before Uh, you know, ask ask before, ask on the help desk channels, ask before you have to resort to something like this, because you might, you know, fully burn down your work. Um, and that's why it's best to, you know, make a backup. And, um, and you know, if you're interested in a full story about this, uh, like a scenario where we had it with this, uh, there's a recent blog that I wrote uh, with, uh, thanks to uh, one person uh, at Liber that allowed me to, to share their story. Uh, but uh, this is a much more detailed uh, um, uh, story of why that was useful making the backup. And this is me helping someone else. And if I hadn't made the backup, I would have deleted like a year of work of someone else or something like that. Um, I was trying to help them and I thought I knew how to help them, but I still made a backup <laughs> just in case I burned things down and I did burn things down. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, be careful here. Uh, 
Um, cool. Awesome. So if there are no more questions, we'll end the session here and then I'll stay on with Stephanie. Thanks, Leo. That was really helpful. Thanks, Leo. Thank, Thank you. Leo. Thanks, oh. Angel, for walking Let us me... through on your screen. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Let me stop okay. recording. Mm.